Web Systems Lesson 4 The Web and Human Computer Interaction Part 1 The Web You might recall earlier that the web is a bunch of computers and a bunch of networks and web servers, including things like a web server program running on top of an operating system which serves files like index.html. A web server is just a program that accepts requests from a browser over a network connection. Typically, a browser will make a request, in this case, for index.html. And the server gets the request, finds the appropriate file, in this case it's index.html, and sends it back to the browser. Here's the request, it's called a HTTP response. The browser reads the index.html, converts the text format into a web page. Now note, in this particular case, we displayed a what was known as a static file, in this case index.html, but can also be dynamically generated from a program, for example, a program called PHP or ASP.NET. This is how you can have content that's generated from a database, like a shopping cart or a form that's personalized to you. Because this happens so often, you'll often find that large websites manage their content through a system called a content management system. Uh, a classic example is a system called Drupal or WordPress, which you may have heard of. In fact, UTS actually uses Drupal to manage our main website. Web pages generally are just plain text files. They contain text, the contents. We have markup. And the different types of markup include things like HTML, which describe how the content is displayed. We have CSS, the cascading style sheet, which shows how you actually present the page. This HTML is divided into various structures, for example, headings, lists, paragraphs, tables, images, forms, and so on. The web browser interprets this text and markup and CSS and presents it in a way that looks really interesting and nice. Web pages are just plain text files. I've mentioned before they contain text, the actual content, and markup, also known as tags. For example, this, for example, is a tag. Less than, h1, greater than. And all tags have to be ended usually with a tag that looks like this. Less than, forward slash, h1, close bracket. The content or the text is actually the bits in yellow. Hello world in this case. This is a test. Now the information contained within this h1 slash h1 is called a container and it's this, this particular case this is called a header one. Large text on top of the screen. The great beauty of web pages is they are hypertext. We link to other pages via various mechanisms. For example, we might have a keyword or sentence that it will link to another page. Because of the history of the web, which started a long time ago, there are several dialects of HTML. The most popular at the moment is HTML4, but the current version is HTML5 which is really the version that should be used nowadays. Now embedded within each browser is a HTML viewer. It's called an engine or web engine. The three most popular web engines is WebKit, which is what Chrome is based on, and Safari, as well. Microsoft Edge, which is unfortunately gone, but it's actually replaced with WebKit, would you believe it, and Gecko. There's a few other ones around as well, but these are the main three. As you can see from W3 Schools 2020, the most popular by far is the Chrome browser, 
which uses WebKit, and uh, Safari, which also uses WebKit, but a different version of it. Edge, which is the Microsoft version, the current version, also uses WebKit, and Firefox uses Gecko, and there's Opera, which is one left over. So why do we have all these different engines and why do we care? Well, the main issue is sometimes the rendering is different on each device and browser. There's many quirks. For example, Internet Explorer 10 and 11 may not produce your web page exactly the same as Safari or Chrome. So you'll find that a lot of these browsers have their own custom CSS, always starting with a minus sign specifically to allow them to do different things that which make the browser unique. Do not use this for your assignment. This means if you're developing a website, you must test on multiple browsers and multiple devices. A classic example to test on Android and iPhones, the two most popular markets on the phones, and test on Chrome and Firefox as well if you can. I'm not going to talk about HTML itself, but just be assured that this is in the W3 schools and you'll be doing the lab next week. Another good site to look at is W3 schools, how to. This actually tells you how to do various effects using CSS and HTML. A very good reference site to how to do fancy effects without having to use much code. But it's vital, absolutely vital, that if you copy the piece of code from this website, you must acknowledge this inside your HTML page or in the text as well. Another good site to look at is ryanstutorials.net. He's an ex-tutor of this subject. He has got a very good idea on how, what HTML, CSS and general concepts of design. And finally, do your EdSTEM lessons. Uh, another good example of what not to do is the web page that suck.com and in particular one example they give is a company called uat.edu which uses the most horrible uh, website and navigation. Um, Habeworks is another example but I can't really show you here because it requires a computer. Again ryantutorial.net and look up the University of Washington. They talk about web design and development but especially about accessibility. You can find the specification for the assignment on UTS Online. I'll cover examples later. And when we come back from the break in week seven, we will also go over the peer marking as well. And a few more hints. Try your website at different resolutions. 102 by 768 is essentially a minimum type standard you should test it on. So if your site may be developed on a large HD screen, which is 1920 wide, try it on 1024 just to make sure it works. I also suggest you try two different browsers with different web engines. It's essential they're different. I recommend you try it on Firefox and Chrome or Safari.